What do you do when you don't know what to do? You may be asking yourself, what happened to my magnificent marriage or my fantastic family? What do we need to do to get back on track? If you need answers to these and other questions, then you are in the right place. Today I want to talk about the pair of pillars for great relationships. There are two of them, love and truth. Many relationships today begin with a bang and end with a boom. You see, things are great until things are no longer great. You know the story, two people meet and they fall in love and everything is exciting until the honeymoon is over. You raise little angelic kids, and one day there are aliens living in your house. What happened? Well, let me try to help. You see, love and truth must be integrated together in order to develop happy and healthy relationships. You see, when a person experiences love, it gives them family. When a person accepts truth, it gives them freedom. Even a stray dog or cat knows when you feed them, you show them love. They tend to stick around and be a part of the family. You know, in the Bible, in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, if the God of the universe loves us, then we also should love him, love ourselves, and love others. You see, we all need love to survive. Abraham Maslow, the renowned American psychologist, includes love and belonging as one of the top three basic human needs. So what is love? Well, it depends on who you ask. A man was talking to his friend and he says, I love my wife. Later on, he told his co-worker, I love my dog. This same man loves his car, his house, and he really loves pizza. But I hope he doesn't love and treat his wife the same way he treats his pizza. The reality is many people treat their loved ones like they treat their dog or pizza. They use them to satisfy themselves, and then they ignore them until they need them again. So what is love? You know, in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, it gives us what I think is the best definition of real love. It goes something like this. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave unruly, does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Hang on to that. It rejoices in the truth. It says love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And here is the clincher, love never fails. Wow. So let me ask you this question. How does your definition of love compare to this one? Reality check. This is the kind of love that promotes happy and healthy relationships. You see, love is what it does. Did you know that children that feel loved at home tend to perform better in school? That's right. Spouses who feel loved at home perform better at work. And listen to this. They make more money than those who feel unloved. Feeling loved and a sense of belonging promotes happier, healthier relationships. Not only do we need love, but we also need to know the truth. I love what Jesus said. He says, and ye shall know the truth, 
and the truth shall make you free. Now the Greek word for truth is aletheia. Aletheia, it means verity. It's a fundamental belief. It means the whole truth or the naked truth. Truth without prejudice or bias. You know, today, many people adopt a truth that is full of bias. Yes, but when we allow truth to be transformed to the whole truth, then we find freedom. Sometimes it's difficult, I know, difficult to hear the truth about ourselves or to even accept the truth. Now, why does knowing the truth, I'm talking about the whole truth, the naked truth, why does knowing the truth make us free? You see, the freedom in knowing the truth comes when we begin to correct the errors in our judgment. We begin to correct the errors in our perceptions and carnal beliefs. You see, small daily errors, such as ignoring each other or subtle disrespect or losing interest in our spouse or children, these small errors are not noticeable at first, but over time they add up. And then one day you wake up and discover that you have made a huge mistake. Now the same is true on the other side. Small corrections, such as recognizing the good in others, saying thank you, or admitting when you're wrong and saying I'm sorry. These small corrections are not noticeable at first, but over time, if we're consistent in being disciplined and doing those right things, these small corrections will add up and we'll wake up and find out that we're living our best life. How many of you want to live your best life? You see, it is my hope and desire that each of us want to live our best life by showing love and sharing truth to those around us. Yes, it hurts to hear, to share the truth with those we love. But eventually, if we do that, we'll find the chains of doubt and disappointment will be broken. It may be dark right now, but remember, the sun is always shining on the other side of the dark clouds. Just keep on loving. Keep on speaking the truth in love, and the sun will come out again. Thank you again for joining me. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons for more informative videos.